Let us welcome Reverend Dr. Pastor Amos. It's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Me too. Thank you so much for accepting our invite and coming today. So he's the president of Academy of Prophets and he's the overseer of Tabernacle of Holiness Church. And uh, he has planted uh, churches uh, in Asia, such as Malaysia, India, and also he's, uh, he, God used him powerfully in the nation of Indonesia as well. So, so um, our Reverend Dr. Amos, yes. uh, before we dive into today's topic, I, I just would like to know where it all started from. I know you have um, you created a strong uh, Tamil uh, work in Singapore in the early 80s, 1980s, and now as well, and how you went to Malaysia and how God um, uh, asked you to come to Singapore to establish a church, and uh, eventually God was using you all over the uh, all over the world, especially in Asia, and Indonesia, uh, um, where there was such a revival among the Indonesian community. Look, look kindly um, tell us more about it. Well, you. I was born into a Pentecostal family, okay. and at the age of eleven, I got born again at home, and it was close to the. Uh, charismatic revival times. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So every day dad will insist that we pray with him. So we have two hours of study and all that. I mean going to study your school books then before dinner one hour with him. So it is during that time that uh, the spirit of God impacted us. I was 11 years old. My brother was uh, nine years old. We became holy rollers, <laughs> speaking in tongues and all that. So we were in a kampong village mm -hmm. called Kranji. Kranji. Dad has bought a piece of land and built two wooden houses. One house here for rent. So we were uh, in that kind of situation. We were not so rich. Uh, Dad was the only supporter in the family. We are eight or uh, seven of us. Seven? Wow. One house, one, so it's seven. He's the sole breadwinner. Yeah, and I was the fifth one. Fifth one. My wife also happened to be the fifth one. Oh, that's so nice. Full of grace, I think. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so everything started there. So that uh, night, I remember when I was 11 years old, I was so excited for Jesus. I, I got born again uh, on that day, really. And then I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, wake me up at 6 o'clock and uh, so that I can talk to you. Uh, we had a, what do you call, we had a old grandfather's clock, but it has no alarm thing. So, uh, I said, you wake me up. So, that was the first encounter. Early in the morning, I got a very tight slap, big slap. I felt my jaws all broken. And then those days, the bed, you can have a family under the bed. So, I thought my brother, older brother, Danny, he always bully us. So I thought he must be the one. Look down, look around. Who is that? And the pain was so severe. Then I look at the clock, six o'clock sharp. God has a humorous way of whacking me. But when I said, how come you hit me so hard? The pain was gone. So that was the first humorous encounter. Encounter with God. Like God woke you up. Yeah. Just woke you up, not like woke you up to pray or something like that. No, I asked him, wake me up at oh, yes. 6 o'clock for me. So you answered your prayers? Yes. <laughs> that's so, so nice. That's so that's your first encounter with him. Yeah. So how, after that, um, you grew up in the church? Um, yeah, this uh, church that my dad was going is a Pentecostal church. Okay. Uh, so we all get baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and we believe in healing, faith, and all that. So from uh, childhood, yeah, moral life, everything mom teach. Mom will, when we are very young, mom will uh, put all of us, we are like one, two year only different. So she will open the Bible and express Bible stories from Adam and Eve and all that. So one day when I was primary three, I studied science book, men came from monkey, you know, the old stone age, all the place was this, but they were all. I came home and said, Mom, you told the wrong thing. We all came from monkey. No wonder that white lady who came to our house, when I, I used to climb oak coconut trees. Okay. We had 13 coconut trees. I was a good climber. I was considered one of the strongest, okay. you know, in the family. So, and she said, wow, he can climb like monkey. <laughs> then when I studied primary three science, men came from monkey, mommy, she said, 
before your teacher was born and before the author of the book was born, this book was already inspired to Moses about how Adam and Eve came and all that. So, okay, then we start believing the Bible more. It's so nice that your mom was very strong in the word of God. Yeah. And he, he, she knitted you all in the word of God. Thank God. Yeah. Very strong knowledge. Yeah, that's very good. So, when we went back slide and all that, we still came back. Ah. Because always there's the fear of God. The that what God we do is, is wrong, we must come back to God. Mm -hmm. That thing was there. Thank God for the parents. Yes. Yeah. Such so, um, sir, uh, so how after that, uh, um, I, heard, I know, uh, we know that you were in the police force as you grew up, you went, you went inside the uh, army and uh, eventually to the police force and how you transited into full time, how God called you into full time and how it was a struggle for you from corporate to full time? Actually, I was a public health overseer oh, and there you take care of, it was called Ministry of Environment. So I take care of those road sweepers, night soil area, all that. So I got into trouble with them because when they make mistake, we are supposed to charge them and all that. So uh, they don't like the word charge. So they threatened me and uh, wanted to kill me and all that, that kind of thing, you know. They are all ex convicts. So anyway, mom prayed with me, uh, everything was okay. So one of the workers, they usually start at six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and they are supposed to finish at two. But when I went to that job, they told me, these workers will finish their job by 10 o'clock. Don't stop them, just release them. S sign uh, the time card as two. I said, that's wrong. They said, no, we will take responsibility. But you see, it was wrong. So I, said, just look, yeah. I said, I will follow your instruction. Mm -hmm. But anything you have to answer. Because I only follow what is brief to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the worker is an illegal money lender. We don't know. He was caught by CPID somewhere. And when questioned, he said that my overseer let me go. So they think I was bright. So from the headquarters Ministry of Environment, they sent a letter to check on me, but I wasn't the one. Yeah, you were the, the one. The district co uh, assistant commissioner, mm -hmm. he is the one responsible, mm -hmm. and the uh, senior public health overseer. Anyway, I was, I was. They called me up. They said, uh, "This is just like a verbal warning, uh, but it's not a verbal warning. It won't affect you mm -hmm. because I was doing night class. I repeating my O level. Oh, okay. because that time. Uh, Financially, it was so bad. So I, like going to school, I went to work okay. to bring in some. So I, I promised my mother, um, I cannot study because of our condition. So uh, when I start working, mm -hmm. I will do my class and pass my O and keep going. So that's how I was working and I was doing my class, O level, A level and all that. So it is that time, uh, no. So what happened? Uh, so after, so you juggling your studies and uh, this uh, work as well, yeah. and people were threatening you and they put false charge against yeah. you and. So I went to my union. Lucky I was in the union. Well, and union, those days, the union was active. Yes. Now I don't know. <laughs> uh, they were more neutral. Mm -hmm. So I went there and told the story. Mm -hmm. The briefing officer on the time of interview told me that I must release them. I cannot, I, whatever time they go, as long as they finish their job, the next day you sign the 2 p.m. That's what I did. So the lawyers in the union, they came in and checked all the logbooks oh, of the vehicles coming in and all of that they found out it is a, it is a 15 year old practice before I came. Uh -huh. So finally they had to call me and remove the verbal warning because the verbal warning was because I was going to be promoted as inspector uh, under Ministry of Environment, they call it inspector. Last time in Malay, in Hokkien, they said, Tiku, Tiku Lai they will run. They put the market, any illegal, they will run. We wear a cream shirt. So that was the promotion. But when, when the whole department got it, which was their mistake, yes. then 
Because they were they look at me differently. I was segregated. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, la, I don't want to make you unhappy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be unhappy too. Mm -hmm. So I resigned. Okay. And then I thought, where will be a place that I can stand for truth? Ah. So I thought police force will be the best place mm -hmm. for truth. But when I went there, I saw more, uh, more challenges. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's so nice to know that um, that seed was the DNA within you yes. that wanted truth yes. with all your heart, you know. Yeah. So there was this DNA already God has planted in you yeah. since young. So that's so nice. So, so 77, I joined the police force. 79, mm -hmm. uh, I got married. Married 79. And uh, during my, I was sent to Coast Guard. Okay. Yeah. Then I was later put on uh, uh, in uh, station duties. Okay. So I became in charge of uh, the speed boats, taking patrol and all of that. So my prayer was, Lord, any department I'm ready to go, mm -hmm. but don't put me in that department because everyone takes patrol boat. Okay. So. I do I do I, I cannot say no to them. Mm. I'm very soft. Mm -hmm. And if I say no to them, I won't have friends. Mm. And people have come from other units everything to, to come there to get there and all that. Okay. So the Lord says, I'll put you there. I said I rebuke the devil. And he was why he was, you know, rebuke me when I said, How can you uh, because I'm asking you, I'm praying for something, you are giving the negative. But after that, did you realize that God is putting there to test you? Yes, <laughs> to mold me. Yes. To that's kind of a school of hard knocks to prepare you. Yes. You see? So the next day, after talking with the Lord, the next day the inspector came, Amos, I like your job. I want to put you in charge. Because he cannot stop it. Okay. He feel very difficult. Nobody can handle that. So I said, okay. Uh, uh, no, I said yes because uh, a day before I said yes to the Lord. Okay. So because so of fear, just, uh, yes. because of fear, I fasted one week, and my wife encouraged me. Mm -hmm. So I told my wife, I'm going to stand for God. Mm -hmm. I might lose the job, I might get bashed up, I might be shifted to another, posted to another uh, station. So many things. She said, if you compromise, I'm not with you. So I said, thank you very much. Coming from my Hindu background, God said she became very strong in the law. So I, that was a thing. And the word that came as a Rema word mm -hmm. was Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, that means with all your spirit, yes. and do not lean on your reasoning. We are all educated here, yes. A, B, C, D here. So don't follow the natural information and reasoning, but trust God with all your heart. So that's what I did. Four, four sections, I think, or three sections. I have to stop them. When I was stopping, stopping them, my leg was shivering, you know. So the whole system was stopped, what was happening negatively. Okay. Well, and I became a devil in the station. So when people are, when I'm coming in the gate, I can see the monk, Hantu Sudadatta. Hantu means the devil has come. The one who is spoiling our rice bowl has come. But every time I, lunchtime, go into the storeroom, I will cry and pray for them. So I never have bitterness for them. Because I know that's their lifestyle. They don't have the conviction of Holy Spirit in them. They don't understand, you know. So uh, I keep praying for them. So that was so you my you ministry them. for them. <laughs> when I went there, I told myself, I am the temple of God. Holy Spirit is in me. God has sent me as a light to this station. And I need his strength to be a light. So this was the challenge. Mm -hmm. But God was molding me. I was very reserved also. Mm -hmm. Very shy. To give a testimony also very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I get so blushed. And but God was breaking that. Breaking that. To make me a leader. I was not born leader, I was a maid leader. So my older brother born leader. So uh, so uh, yeah. So um, the whole station changed. Um, we became the best Coast Guard station mm -hmm. and I got a medal, best police officer. Oh, and in the end, everybody liked the system. Of course, they honored our God. So when I then, uh, I, uh, during that time also, uh, I, my wife couldn't 
have a child. Medically cannot, supposed to adopt. But uh, I went on a one year pass while working. One year? Uh, one year. Oh. One meal a day. One meal a day, okay. Uh, because I wanted to hear God's voice. Okay. Well, for me, it's, the word of God says, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 66 9 says, the God who created the womb will not chuck it. Yes. But the doctor says, uh, womb is chronic. Number two is, she has a what immune system working against her. Mm -hmm. So every time conceive, you're losing. Mm -hmm. So I went back to, so here cannot, sorry, let's go spiritual. Check, check. I need to hear God. Because his word says, be fruitful and multiply. But medically cannot. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear his voice. Because John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say my prophet or my evangelist or my pastor. Mm -hmm. He said my sheep, so I'm a sheep. I should be able to hear. So I said, Lord, I can't hear. I came from a Pentecostal family. I hear here and there, but not much, not consistent. Mm -hmm. Now my problem, I need to hear very clearly whether I can have a child. Because your word says, so I'm going to go in mm -hmm. so I can hear well. But the drive force is I want to have a child, right? Because my wife said, look, I come from nine siblings. Huh? Uh, because I say, you are my baby, you are my child. Doctor say, oh, no child, you be my child. She said, no way. So I that won't. became the breakthrough drove you to your knees to yes. ask God. Yes, that's the problem. The Lord. Yeah. yeah, caused me to go on my knees to hear His voice. Yes. Yeah. And so that I know His will, mm -hmm. then I can come in line with what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. Be fruitful and multiply. So I said, okay, I want to change my lifestyle. Okay. So believers, maybe one hour, pastor, maybe two hours. I'll stretch it to the end. Because if you're Met if you have a if you have a sickness that is chronic, mm -hmm. you need to choose the best doctor. You need to have all the money. Of course, your condition cannot be beyond control. So this thing is there. now. You want to go spiritual. You need to pray well, align well in His will. Make sure all that is hundred percent. Then you can expect. So I did the worst I can. So I said one year okay. fast. Uh, one minute the extreme. I, I went to the extreme so the devil has no space. Mm -hmm. So one year uh, pass, uh, one meal a day okay. because I have to take one meal. Otherwise, my uniform will go. I'll be gone, you know. So I need to live also. So pass and then come back from work three hours maximum. Okay. My wife said, I'll join you. Mm -hmm. She just lost an eight month baby and that's where everything happened. So she said, no. I said, no, you don't. You just pray. Say no. Let's the devil use me. So I want to pass also. Okay, one corner there, one corner here. I remember the first time we prayed for eight hours. Mm -hmm. After the first hour, like synchronized, both turn at the same time. I said, what? She said, pray everything already. Don't know what to pray now. Mm -hmm. One hour only. I said, uh, committed, commitment is three hours. Mm -hmm. So three hours became like half an hour. Enjoy the presence of God in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then of course, in, in two months, 60 days, I lost 25 kilo. I had to change my uniform all because the revolver was hanging, you know, like a Western cowboy. My inspector already asked me already. So I changed all that, but inside was building. Mm -hmm. So in that 60 days, mm -hmm. I moved like from the natural realm to the spirit realm. Okay. These five senses are working. Okay. The spirit senses were common. Nobody teach you how to hear from God. Mm -hmm. When I was young, study, study, that's all. Mm -hmm. Never teach how to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. But when Samuel was put in the presence of God, four years old already, yeah. can hear already. So I put myself in that so that I can hear. So where was I going? Yeah, after that two weeks, the prayer, no, two months, yeah. two months, mm -hmm. the spirit senses start to open up. Mm -hmm. So now if my thoughts are flowing in my thoughts, I can see, I can differentiate. Is it my thoughts, God's thoughts? Mm -hmm. Or the devil's thoughts. You can differentiate. You can differentiate because you move from the natural realm mm -hmm. to the spirit realm. Number two, the therapy is done, senses are opening up. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of learning from there. Mm -hmm. So I begin to hear, so I took a photograph. The Lord said, you'll, you'll, you'll have a baby boy. So I took a photograph of a baby placed in the hall, in the bedroom, and put the big words, be fruitful and multiply. All Rema words for me. Wow. And then every day lay hands on her. She's also fasting and praying. So our spirit senses all start to open. This got nothing to do with the calling of a prophet. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But he started hearing his voice. Already. Yeah. Yeah. Like started he, hearing. When you get a son. Mm. Okay. Yes. So, of course, 
After two months, she was pregnant. Okay. Then I stopped her from fasting because baby don't want to fast. You know. So three hours was going on, but uh, uh, we didn't go to the doctor. Why? Because the doctor said, cannot conceive. If conceived, she will die. If she conceived, we don't know what to do. We have to give no assurance. So now go, we went to Dr. Jesus, uh, no consultation fee, and then over dosage of God's word, and the baby was growing. Eight months, we had to register. Amen. The doctor nearly fell off the chair. Uh, he said, we have to do a scan. I said, no need. It's a boy. He said, no, but we also we have to know what is inside because the stomach is so big, you know. I said, no, it's a baby boy inside. I said, doctor, if you scan and if it's boy, you pay me the money. I don't, I won't pay, you pay the money. If girl, I'll pay. So he knows this guy is fanatic, better don't try. He might win. So anyway, God gave me baby boy. 4.2 kilo. The doctor was very shocked. <laughs> shocked. He, he also said, uh, maybe one in a million. He was also trying to use his head for me. Anyway, anyway that was a powerful testimony. Then, when I got the baby boy, I went to Jesus. You made my day. What do you want me to do? You, you speak, I do. Because I would have lived without baby. And go into a doctrine that sometimes God allow this thing to happen. I will go on false doctrine and all. So uh, I was so thankful. I can hear. I can communicate with God. It's a two-way relationship now. Now this miracle. Um, he said, "What you what you are holding now is Singapore law, but the Bible is global law. Mm -hmm. So go for the global law." So I became a police in the kingdom of God. <laughs> from a natural, from a natural. God, God promoted no, I didn't know he was going to be prophetic. <laughs> okay. I was a bit pathetic earlier. Then now I become more prophetic. Yeah. It's not prophetic, it's just that every believer can hear. It's just that they don't practice that because nobody teaches that. School don't teach, parents don't teach, or study, study. So this one becomes Humpty Dumpty here. Then when you try to hear too much of information, reasoning will start to affect when you're growing from kindergarten into in the spirit. So that's why I said, okay, I will teach people kindergarten how to hear God's voice. So that's how we founded the Academy of Prophets. It's not to make prophets, it's, it's just make people prophetic. Mm -hmm. The early church was prophetic. The very church born was out of a prophecy. Joel 2, 28, mm -hmm. that I'll pour my spirit and they will prophesy. Yes. Who? The maids. The, the, the young ones, they will prophesy. So, what does that mean actually? I can hear God's voice, my sheep hear voice. Then, Holy Spirit can tell me to tell you something. In the Pentecostal, they may call it gift of prophecy. In the Evangelicals, the Holy Spirit gave an impression. All the same. So, I said, okay, what I experienced, I want to make it into a proper teaching form. Wrote a book, a manual on it. Accuracy in the prophetic. Accuracy in the prophetic. Uh, oh. Later I wrote another one, but that one is actually uh, my journey with God. All the supernatural experiences you'll see there. Over the How years. I started okay. uh, my early childhood and all that. Are you uh, still writing books uh, about that? Uh, I am going to. Uh, I'm writing articles okay. with their compiling uh, lessons mm -hmm. for the pro second level of prophetic. So later it'll become a, like a manual. Yeah. Because I try to get books from, from the spirit area, people don't go that deep. Mm -hmm. So I realized that we are in a time where the church needs to hear accurately. Mm -hmm. So how to, because people say, oh, the Lord told me, but how the Lord told you? So we want to step by step. Mm -hmm. Everyone will need a step by step. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, computer idiot proof and all that. So this must be idiot proof also. People must know how to really get there step by step. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm also uh, um, uh, simplifying it into kindergarten. So when they go to Sunday school, they will be taught how to hear God's voice. Because mm -hmm. I taught my daughter. So you Which, had daughter as well? Yeah, after that I got bonus <laughs> two years good. later. So she's 38. Wow. She has a son. But when she was six years old, uh, she was coming for breakfast. I said, Joanna, did you talk to Jesus? We don't use the word prayer. Prayer is like doing work. Did you talk to Jesus? Yes, yes, daddy. And so what did Jesus say? 
That's the problem, Daddy. Every time I'm the one talking, I don't know what he's saying. Okay, took her to the room, sit down at the corner. This is the wall I talk to, and then the wall never speak to me. So I said, God help me to speak to her. I said, Joanna, do you have a spirit? Then she said, What? Holy Spirit? No, no. Are you a spirit? You know, Sunday school teacher said that God is a spirit, we are a spirit. Okay. Show me your spirit. She looked around and said, Oh Lord. I said, Daddy, I cannot show you my spirit. That means you don't have a spirit. No, no spirit, I'll be dead. <clears throat> okay. So you fully believe you have a spirit. Jesus said we are to worship, commune, relate. Connect with God through our spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the next question from her is: Then how to hear? And uh, God can speak through scriptures. Mm -hmm. God can speak through parents. Mm -hmm. God can speak through prophecy. Yes. God can speak through preaching. Mm -hmm. God can speak through counsel. God can speak through vision. Mm -hmm. God can speak through mm -hmm. angels mm -hmm. and all that. So whenever you see a dream or whatever, come in. So I went to her. Mm -hmm. Ten years old, somebody came in. A visitor friend, she told me aside, this guy is a womanizer and corrupted. I said, How oh, come you say like that? And I went and checked. Oh, no, it's true. Mm -hmm. So she's. Okay, so she's, she started? Yeah. Because of your training. Because of, uh, uh, <laughs> so so I realized that Sunday school children mm -hmm. must be simplified and taught how to hear. Yeah, From young, yeah so because you push them to study that. Right? You push them to study this one. Like, Train their spirit. Nobody is going to say psychologists don't believe we have a spirit. Mm -hmm. But First Thessalonians five twenty three says, "Our whole spirit, our whole body, and our whole soul must be blameless before God." Yes. How can your spirit man be blameless before God when you don't know how it functions, and you don't know how the spirit and soul integrates, mm -hmm. and how the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your spirit man? How do you communicate? God is using Sintel, you are using Starhub. Starhub, so it's not connecting. <laughs> so we need to bring the right frequency. It's our basic teaching, but we have to practice it. Yeah. To make sure. <laughs> okay, so uh, so do you feel that um, the church uh, needs the fivefold? Because uh, some churches uh, they they uh, don't want prophecies, and um, they also don't want, uh, don't believe in the speaking of tongues. Uh, Dr. Amos, so what do you think? How to relate with them? Well, the first one you said is fivefold, right? Yeah. Ephesians 4 um, 11 to 13. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus ascended and gave five ministries to the church. Yes. Which is prophet, mm -hmm. wait, let me, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Mm -hmm. Five. This five leadership ministry gave was in Jesus. He was a prophet. He talked about the end times. Mm -hmm. He was a shepherd. He died for us. He was a chief shepherd. He is a chief evangelist. He came with the gospel of the kingdom. Right? He's very caring, pastoral. He is a teacher. He taught the word. So all five leadership was in him. Mm -hmm. Now who's the head of the church? Jesus, right? Yes. So he has given that five for the church mm -hmm. to be equipped. For example, you as a believer, yeah. you're supposed to win souls, right? Yes. So an evangelist carries that anointing. Mm -hmm. So his job is not to go and evangelize. Of course, he will do that because he has got the grace. But his greater job for this Bible, <coughs> for this Bible ministry, is to equip people for ministry. That's what the verse says. Mm -hmm. Equip. So equip the saints. Equip you. So the the office of a evangelists mm -hmm. will impact you mm -hmm. because the anointing of Christ is in him impact you also equip you you will have the burden not only the teaching how to will uh, win but also the burden to be a soul winner mm -hmm. so you may not be an evangelist but you need to do soul winning mm -hmm. you may not be a pastor but you need to care for people mm -hmm. you know cell group leader and all that you may not be uh, a prophet but you need to hear the voice of God yes, true. the chief prophet is inside man. Mm -hmm. You need to have an apostolic vision which is from heaven, the great commission. Yeah, so all this fivefold ministry must be in the local church to equip a believer fully to the stature of Christ. Let's say I'm a senior pastor, but I don't have a prophet in my church. 
Mm. You know, but prophetic people, they are grace over on worship, intercession, because all spirit, you know, mm. hearing the voice of God. So you can bring in Pastor Amos to come to your church, mm. not necessarily me, those who are mm. prophetic, mm. to equip your church mm. so that they can hear God's voice. Because it's not a Pentecostal or evangelical. Yeah. It's, it's a biblical word. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. Yes. So somebody have to teach us how to hear. Yes. You know? So that's important. I don't know whether I touch everything, but I but start the first one. The speaking of tongues, uh, uh. those who are not saying it's, it's only those acts, books of acts, they, you know, they, uh, they don't believe this now. So yeah. what would you... Uh, well... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10, uh, talks about the nine gifts of the Spirit, which includes the gift of tongues. Right? So when the Holy Spirit comes into us, He comes with the full nature of God and the full power of God. The nature is the nine fruits. Whether you are evangelical, brethren, Pentecostal, apostolic, or prophetic, everyone is teaching on this. Mm. Nine proof. You must have the nine proof, the character of Christ, the character. Of. But you're not balanced. Inside the Holy Spirit got nine gifts. Mm. And the nine gifts is not my title, you know. Like gift of healing, it's to heal somebody. Mm. Word of knowledge to flow. In evangelism, you word of knowledge. Like last night, yesterday, I, I said, among you, mm. one of you has got a left neck pain. Mm. The lady put up, okay, brown. Then we say, how long? Okay, all, all got together, pray for her. Halfway prayer, she felt the release. So many years like that state, you know. So we believe that by tomorrow, by today, she'll be. So it's a supernatural gift in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is in you. Okay. Now I... So my job is to study how the gift of healing operates mm -hmm. and then practice it. Now let's go to Mark chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 16 and 17. These are signs of a believer. It is a sign of evangelical, sign of Pentecostal, sign, sign of a believer. He will cast out demons. Yes. How many of them are casting out demons? I don't have the gift. No need. <laughs> it's just you as a believer, you have the nature of Christ, character of Christ, and you have the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you receive a house, you receive a theological degree. No. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you receive power. Amen. You don't need to be evangelical or what? You receive power to witness. Amen. So this is divine ability to shine for Jesus. At the same time, to flow uh, in, that, uh, in that power, we need to walk in love highly. Uh, yes. So there's a marker of walking right. in love. Character sustain the anointing. Yes. When when we stand before God on Judgment Day is the character. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit, not human being, I mean, the Holy Spirit has two parts: power and divine nature. Okay. Divine nature, divine power. So we must be wholesome in taking all of that, mm -hmm. because the world need healing. Yes. We thank God for medical science and all that. We are improving, but there's limit. But God's power is unlimited. And so, if the Bible says a sign of a believer, they cast out demons in the sea, why not use it? It's more profitable. But, mm. So, how to get it? Practice it, understand it, keep practicing. You know, I, if you have a PhD for riding bicycle, but when you sit on the bicycle, you'll fall down. Why? Right? You need to practice. So, Holy Spirit is there, the gifts is there, you need to understand it, you need to practice, lubricate it, then it, your, as your faith level goes up, and as you pre practice it, then you see the power of God flowing through you, and people get healed. When people get healed, the kingdom of God rejoices. It's not because I get healed, no, I'm just a conduit. I be a channel, good channel. So, like you said, it should be motivated by God's love. Like the word of God says, Jesus moved with compassion and innocence. That one must be there, not to show off. Some people show off or use the gift for uh, the financial gain. These are people doing mistakes, but the gift is from God. But Jesus said, didn't say, look at the gift. No, he said, check the fruit. So they, they, usually they come and say, 
Wow, so tuna. The guy played always so sharp. I like him. No. Check the proof. Because the word of God, Jesus said, in the last days, they said, I cast out demon, I prophesied. Jesus said, I don't know you, man of iniquity. Of course, people got saved, kingdom of God blessed. But God is watching your character. Must have the full nature of the Holy Spirit, which is character and power. A lot of people hold the character, not the power. power. Yeah, in the long run, when the character fails, the power also cannot be seen. Also. Yeah. yeah, correct. When people know you are no good at all. So, do you think uh, there is a, a, is a personal uh, holiness is very vital for the church for a revival? Because uh, do you think there's a lot of compromise happening? I feel there's too much of compromise happening. Another meaning for uh, grace is mm. divine enablement. So, with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God, there's nothing that we cannot overcome. Whether it's adultery or thinking or whatever, whatever weakness we can overcome. It says some become habits, it takes longer time. But God is so loving, you are not His slave, you are not His servant. You are born into His family. You know, if I am a father, I am a father actually, I, um, uh, I got two children actually, so let's say my son is always doing wrong drugs and all that. Every time I go into prayer, my thought will be healed. Why? Right? My daughter is okay. My son. Oh Lord, touch him. So a father always want to help the son to overcome. Now we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Created the universe. You think he had no power to overcome your weakness? So with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God, you can overcome. Yes, the Word of God is sharper than any two ages. Yeah, so, it's not automatic. Yes. You need to yield to it. Yield to it. Uh, so that the Word of God. Uh, is. It's not all that good. the grace of God calling you, calling you. Before I committed an adultery, no grace. Now I got grace, I can continue. No, the grace will help you to break through and overcome. Yes, amen. So, um, then, um, so I just, we just would like to know, um, over the years, uh, Dr. Amos, we have mentioned a lot of youths as well, and, uh, and to see them to whom God has made them to be. Can you tell us more about that, how it was mentoring the youths, and how um, we can um, nurture them, whom God has called them to be, and uh, to have an impact over their lives? In recent times, mm -hmm. I've been going to India often. I was always going to, I was a missionary to India for a year, then after I kept going since 1984. But this year, surprisingly, I'm going eight, nine times. Why? Because there's a surge of young people who come from Christian families, and they're hungry to hear God's voice. They ask their parents, Mommy, Daddy, how God speaks? Oh, God speaks. So how He speaks? Oh. When I'm praying, I'm in the presence of God. So how you go into the presence? They cannot answer. So they heard about me, and then they want me to mentor them. These are all between 20 years old, sometimes even younger, and 35, 40. All young guys. But uh, I don't know why, I don't know. When I go with them, I also become young. You know? That's why my hair is still not fully white yet. So, uh, they are hungry. Their way of thinking is, I press G O O, I can get answers. G O D, no answer. Because it's IT, you know, advanced. AI is more. You know, they get answer. How come I cannot? Mommy is saying, Daddy is preaching, uh, healing is happening, but no healing is happening. God is speaking, but he himself cannot hear well. You ask him, uh, he says, 20 years ago, the Lord spoke to me. After that, after that concept. So if my father himself is like that. Mm -hmm. So they are searching and looking for who can teach us on that mm -hmm. because they want to see God's kingdom advance. So I now I'm mentoring them, the young people. So young people are very open to innovation. Mm -hmm. So innovation and all that. Also, they want the spiritual technology. You know, if God is real, because everything is like, you know, you do something, you get a result. How come I do something and I'm here? So if God is real, how come I cannot communicate? How come I cannot hear Him? 
So they all are very hungry for that. Before they go wild uh, or become very secular, we need to go and uh, teach them that. So they are good in music, they are good in evangelism, uh, missions, uh, and then the relationship with God. So all this, and then moving in the power, moving in the gifts, plus the character, all this, they are very interested. So I remember uh, some years ago when I was pastoring, mm -hmm. I pastored for 38 years now, I had a go. But uh, the Holy Spirit told me, take all your young people and put them in worship. In my worship team, they were young and old. Mm -hmm. So I got all those 40 year old, they got very angry with me. I said, there's no way we have to do. We have to bring them to us. And then if they make mistake, we guide them. So all below 40 took over our worship team music and all that. So we guided them and they caught the vision of the church. Wow. Uh, so this year... It's so nice that you even do not seeing their weakness, but you yeah. train them and so then. they caught the vision and they became fired up for God. Yeah. Because now these are people stereotype the youths and uh, uh, put, put them aside because yeah. of their weakness. Yeah. Then they go back uh, backsliding in mm -hmm. their own ways. They have more temptation than <laughs> us. Our side don't have this gadget all, no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so this year we sent the 14 year old to the 17 year old, 17 year old to Nepal, mm -hmm. exposed them mm -hmm. to ministry. Wow. And then they came out and said, How come I touch the guy's sleep? What is happening in the spirit? So we give them all the detail, all the happened, what is moving, Holy Spirit is in you. Mm -hmm. The 14 years old, no? Mm -hmm. So they're no more, uh, uh, more interested in the secular thing, they're now interested in the spiritual technology. So, so, uh, uh, and I just want to also ask you on this uh, important question because right now we're living in the end times uh, uh, of the days. So, how do you think the Bride of Christ, which is church, can prepare themselves in, the, uh, in these end times um, instead of um, having the church in a normal way just as they used to do? Because, because the coming of God is near, and how they could prepare in these end times as a Bride of Christ and not without any blemishes? I have this prophetic word for this season that is Isaiah chapter 16, 1 to 3. The first verse says, Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of God come upon you. The key word in these three verses is arise. So we cannot be nominal anymore. And God wants to bring the church into the front line of society in every area. Jesus, you know, if I tell you Jesus is not the Savior of the church, He's the king of the church. He's the king of the nation. He was the king. He came as the king. He's coming, He's coming back as the king. Even in the cross, he put the king of Jews. So Pontius Pilate is asking him, so are you the king? Then he says, in John 18, 37, for this reason mm -hmm. to be the king. Mm -hmm. said, for this reason I came to establish the kingdom. So Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God. We also pray like that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done from as it is in heaven. So we have to build church like that. And we are the church. The building is not the church. We are the church. And we have been given the keys to establish the kingdom. We have two kingdoms here. The kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light. We come from the kingdom of light. So everyone is full time. Why? He bought you with the blood. You don't belong to yourself. So in your profession like this, you're full-time for Jesus. Mm -hmm. An accountant, full-time for Jesus in the financial sector. My son is a doctor, mm -hmm. full-time in the medical field. So the church, we, the church fivefold ministry equip him and he is sent into the medical field. And there he has skill, learn himself to be a good doctor. And then in his skill, he does it as the spirit will lead plus the experience and the learning and then when time or uh, situation maybe in the operation all he studied didn't work then tap on the holy spirit then miracle happens the nurses see so he's a like that the church in the marketplace the church in the medical field so we are sent the first word in the early church is go but now we are saying, come and see. Got oh, air condition, no? nice parking place, Sunday school, very good material. Very no. Early church was go and tell. After the dark ages, come and see. Church become a sacred building. It is never 
This is the sacred building. Yeah. We are the temple of God. I forgot your question. So, uh, how to prepare uh, for the end times? Uh, to the how the so this verse says, yes. arise. That means it must come out from our natural, uh, nominal Christian life and radically change to hear God's voice. And then the glory of God will come. So the second verse says, darkness will cover the earth mm -hmm. and cover the people. In Matthew 24, 25, Jesus is talking about end time. Mm -hmm. COVID is just a beginning. More things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Antichrist and all of that is going to increase. If the church is not good in the word and in the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be a light. So you have to radically change. What is that? Arise. Prayer, fasting, everything. The third thing is, the third thing is, um, uh, it says the Gentiles okay. and the kings will come to you because of your brightness yes. and your arising. So I would say to the church today, come out from your net, your nominal life, mm -hmm. tap on the Holy Spirit, press in into prayer, take long fast, prayer work, because God is bringing the new wine into the church only a remnant because jesus is talking the parable now wise virgin foolish the oil is not anointing the oil is your character mm -hmm. your connection with god because that's why they didn't give the oil they didn't share mm -hmm. how can character be shared how can the uh, love be shared how can uh, uh you know commitment all this be shared so that's the oil that we needed the nature of christ fully that's how they were called in antioch they had the nature of christ they had the power of Christ. So this one must be Christ followers, Christians. That's what this is here. They had the nature of God, they had the power of God. So church have to come out from your nominal way, traditional way. Yeah. All this came in the dark ages. <laughs> Go back to the book of Acts. It's the book of the uh, Acts of the Holy Spirit. And follow that pattern. Amen. And then rise up in the Spirit. There's no denomination there. There's only one body of Christ. Holy Spirit we need, the Word we need, the Spirit we need, we need the anointing. Our born again experience, experience is supernatural. The Holy Spirit is supernatural. God is supernatural. Then why is not happening? The supernatural power. Because we become so humpty dumpty, full of the word secular, A, B, C, D. Where's the A, B, C, D of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. So the Spirit also must function well, and we need to teach them in such a way that they can integrate with the Holy Spirit yes. and let the Holy Spirit flow in our life and through our life and be a light. Be a light to the world. That's so nice uh, sharing uh, from Dr. Amos. I uh, was so good, was so rich uh, when he expounded uh, on a lot of topics. I uh, hope you all had a good time. Uh, so any questions from anyone? <laughs> okay, that's so nice, uh, Dr. Amos. Thank you for sharing uh, your experiences and your testimony. Sorry, I'm a bit wrong. No, no, that's right. It was, so, it was so good, it was so rich, uh, Dr. Amos. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, may the Lord continue to use you and may you bear more fruits even though you're getting older but you're still looking young, you know? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. I follow my heart. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, may you bear more fruits and may the Lord use you mightily. Thank you. Thank you for the famous. Thank you for the song. <laughs>